Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Hong. Now this week I am going to give a focus update on the Pfizer vaccines. It was first approved for emergency use back in December in many different parts of the world. So let's look at how it is performing in the real world since that time. If you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. The goal for this channel is to connect everyone with scientific facts. This includes my regular COVID-19 update and as well as other general science topics. My idea is that if I can understand a topic, you can understand. If you are interested in learning more about scientific fact, please consider subscribing to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. So without further ado, let's dive into today's topic. So like I said at the beginning, today we are going to have a focus talk on the two-month update on the Pfizer vaccine and look at how it performed in the real world. First, a disclaimer, this video is my summary and interpretation of publicly available scientific information. This video is not intended as any advice on treatment diagnosis and prevention of any diseases and I have no affiliations with the company that I mentioned in the video. So let's first look at some of the background information. On December 11th last year, Pfizer and BioNTech's vaccine was approved for emergency use by the US FDA and many other countries. And this vaccine was indicated for people aged 16 and older. Now as of right now, there are four countries that have given a lot of the Pfizer vaccines. So the highest uh, amount all these nations per 100 people would be the Israel, United Arab, UK and US. So today we are going to look at some of the updates in terms of what has Pfizer done to the vaccine since approval. How does Pfizer vaccine perform in the real world and how does Pfizer vaccine work against new virus mutants. Now the first update, let's look at the vaccine storage and stability issues. Now currently, the Pfizer vaccine have a very stringent storage requirement. So it was required to store at negative 7 degrees Celsius and it would be stable for 6 months. And in terms of in a dry ice condition, it was stable for 30 days. And when it's hold in a refrigerator temperature, it will be stable for 5 days. Now Pfizer just released a press release on February 19th saying they have submitted a new data to the US. FDA, it shows the vaccine's stability at between negative 25 degrees Celsius to negative 15 degrees Celsius, which is at the common freezer temperature. And it's saying that at this temperature, it is stable for up to two weeks. So they're trying to seek for an uh, update in terms of the storage requirement so that it could be distributed to a wider uh, population. Another update they've done is to look at vaccine usage in pregnant women. So Pfizer just also released a press release on February 18th saying that it has given the first dose in the global phase 2-3 trial in terms of looking at the safety, tolerability, immunogenicity of its vaccine in preventing COVID-19 in healthy pregnant women aged 18 years or older. So it is a controlled placebo randomized study looking at about 4,000 healthy pregnant women at 18 years old or above. Now they are going to look at these pregnant women in between the gestational age of uh, 24 to 34 weeks. This study is going to last between 7 to 10 months and they are also going to look at the safety in infant up to 6 months of the age after the baby is born. So the third update is to look at how does the Pfizer vaccine perform in the real world. Now we are looking at the data from Israel Sheba Medical Center. So a lot of the health 
a care worker in this hospital have received the Pfizer COVID vaccine. But in fact, Israel is only giving out the Pfizer vaccines and none of the other available vaccine is given in the country. So they published a study in The Lancet, which is a post-vaccine analysis. And they said after they analyzed the data in terms of effectiveness, there is between 89 to 91% effectiveness after the first dose in between 15 to 28 days. Now this is in contrast to the first dose 52.4 efficacy reported by the Pfizer company in their phase 3 study. So it is actually saying that it is much more effective than what was claimed in the study. Now as of Friday, February 19th, uh, in Israel, about half of all the people have already received at least one dose of the Pfizer vaccine. So after looking at some of the more positive news, let's look at one of the not as positive news about the Pfizer vaccine. So there is an article published on February 17th in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now a group of the researchers looking at how blood taken from people received the Pfizer vaccine and used it against virus engineered to look like the B11351 mutant, which is the South African mutant. And they observed there is a two-third drop in the neutralization power in the antibody in the blood compared to other forms of the virus. So here is again one of the figures showing you how this, this mutated spike protein can affect some of the antibody work from preventing it to binding to the ACE2 receptor. Now there is a link of the previous video I talk about mutants and in the description box you can check that out. Now in this study they only look at the antibody effectiveness against the virus. So clearly there is a study limitations. They didn't look at the T-cell effect effectiveness in against those infected cells, which is those CD8 cytotoxic T cells. In fact, just looking at blood samples, it's hard to look at its effect. So this is a major drawback of the study, but nevertheless, it provided an answer in terms of how these antibodies generated from vaccinations work against a engineered virus with this mutant. So very quickly, let's look at the tickle message for this week. Now Pfizer is seeking regulatory approval for regular storage, freezer storage for its COVID-19 vaccine. Now it's also conducting a global phase two, three trials with its vaccines on healthy pregnant women 18 years old and above. The first dose of the Pfizer vaccine have shown to be more effective in the real world than in their phase three study based on the article published by a Israel hospital group. And antibodies produced from the Pfizer vaccine is less effective in neutralizing the South Africa coronavirus mutant, but again, the study did not look at the T cell immunity. So to learn more about today's topic, here are the links of the press releases and the articles that I referenced of for today's content. So I hope this video is able to give you a quick update on the Pfizer vaccines and how it's doing in the real world. Now that is all for my COVID-19 update this week and I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.